Well, today is free calc. We're looking at 8-3 day one, and we're looking at hyperbolas. Okay. Now, today, you'll be able to look at geometry of hyperbolas and their key features, uh, write equations of a hyperbolas, translate a hyperbola, and understand the applications of a hyperbolas. Okay. We're going to do the application stuff tomorrow. Okay. We're going to get through example four for those people who are wondering where we're going to go and get to. Now, If only this could actually work the way it's supposed to. Um, definition of hyperbola, a hyperbola is a set of all points in a plane whose distances from two fixed points in the plane have a constant difference. Well, it's a constant difference just like it is for ellipses. Uh, the fixed points are the foci of the hyperbola. Uh, the line through the foci is called the focal axis. Okay, so the point of the focal axis midway between the foci is the center. So if I got the foci, this distance, is C. Okay? Now, here's the thing. That distance is C. The distance from the center to the vertex, that distance is A. In the ellipses, A was further than C because it was the outside and C was inside the ellipse. So now today, we go back to Pythagorean theorem the way it's supposed to be. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Notice the subtle difference because we're talking about C being further from the center. But if you really think about it, as you look at your ellipse, as you look at your ellipse, it curves around the focus. So the focus has to be further than the vertex itself. So as you reason through this, it'll make better sense. Okay. B is the width of a box we're going to talk about, okay, and that's called the conjugate axis, and A is the transverse axis, and that's the major axis. And again, A can be with X or A can be with Y, but unlike ellipses, it's not always the largest. It's the one that's first, and we're going to talk about that too. Okay, so those are the subtle differences that if you don't have ellipses down, you're going to be like, oh, they're all the same. They're not, and that's the thing that gets us in trouble. Okay, so keep that in mind as we're going through today. And then we have the general jargon uh, coming up here. So the stuff I kind of just talked about, that C is greater than A, is listed here in the hyperbola stuff. That C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, and A is always first. Okay, so... When I have it with x, notice that I have a subtract sign. Okay, notice this subtract sign. And here, a is always first. The first value is the major axis or the transverse axis values, if you want to think about it that way. So the first one with x squared over a squared, the transverse axis is horizontal. Okay, and the second one, y squared is with a squared, the transverse axis is vertical. Okay, and the other ones that not that is not the transverse axis is the conjugate axis. Now we still use the phrases semi, semi-transverse, half the transverse axis length, semi-conjugate, half the conjugate axis length. Okay, so those things are still similar as we go through. So we can do some uh, recall of that, so we don't have to like relearn the world. But you have to make sure you sh you understand the differences. Okay. Now, this idea of A and B. First of all, I'm going to pull this out. I'm not sure why I left that in there. I guess I didn't see it when I was cleaning up these notes. Um, I want to talk about the asymptote, okay? Because a lot of folks will go through and go, oh, look at this sheet. i got to memorize all this stuff. Not if you kind of put it together and think about what it actually is, okay? When I take the regular formula. Now, I don't care which one we're talking about. I'm just going to do one of them. If I solve this relation, notice the one change I made. I took the one out and made it zero. If I solve this relationship for y, so that my next step is doing this, okay, my next step is taking the square root of both sides. And my last step is multiplying by A. I'm going to do a different color. Okay. 
That's my asymptote equation, okay? The equation of my asymptote. You can memorize it if you'd like, but it's right there sitting in front of you when one's zero. Okay, you just make it equal to zero, you solve, you have your asymptote equation, okay? And it's actually in the, in the um, things, the key features of the ellipse, excuse me, the hyperbola, not of the ellipse, but the, of the hyperbola, okay? And this one would be solved in a like manner. I wouldn't do it any differently, but generally it's y is plus or minus a, b times x, where a and b are the slope of my diagonal line we're about to find out about, okay? Now, when I graph these, this value of A, okay, the transverse axis, 2A makes my distance, this is 2A. From vertex to vertex, my distance is 2A, okay? I have something called the conjugate axis, okay? The conjugate axis is my B. The dimension of 2a, because remember, this is 2a. The idea is that I bring up the actual line I drew, but we'll just move that up there. This is 2a, these are the same, okay? That dimension and my conjugate axis, which is this, this is my 2b, okay? If you think slope, through zero, zero, my rise and run, okay, for this one is A over B. So this one, if I solve this, it'd be Y equal plus or minus B over, you know, or excuse me, yeah, B over A, because my rise is B, my run is A, B over A, X. So this is my asymptote. And over here, this is my asymptote. Notice the difference of the two equations and the asymptotes. It would make sense that they would flip. Okay. Does that make sense? The conjugate value is B. Transverse value is A. And it doesn't matter. The size doesn't matter. Okay. It's which one's first in the equation. Questions about this information so far? Yeah. How's it not? Because remember now is x over b, which is the same as 1b times x, and I multiplied by a on that side. So here, this is the same. This value right here is the same as 1 over bx, x going to the top. Because we're talking about a slope. This is rise over run when we finally solve y over a to be that way. Let me get rid of that. And then I multiply by A on both sides. So I have A over B according to multipl multiplication with fractions, X. X can still go with A up top. But generally, when I see a fraction, I have rise over run my slope with X. And that's just telling me that's my slope. OK? And that's the equation of my diagonal line we're going to be working with. Those are my asymptotics, that my asymptotes that I'm going to go through. And that's where my graph doesn't touch. It looks like it kinda, it's kind of a parabola, but it's a parabola with restrictions. It's, it can just go so far. So when you actually draw them, you got to draw on your asymptotes and make sure that when you draw your graph, it won't cross over. Okay. Otherwise, it's a present, presentation issue with our graph. So these are the things we just talked about. Standard. Okay. Oh, did I miss that? Did I miss something on the bottom? Yeah. I don't think I did. Oh, I did. I thought that was on the next page. Thanks, guys. Sorry about that. And again, just like the stuff we did with um, ellipses, the semi-transverse axis and the semi-conjugate axis is just half of the transverse axis and half of the conjugate axis. 
So that semi just means I'm cutting it in half. Yep, Kevin, what do you got? It is not, well, A does not have to be bigger than B. There is no restriction on that. C, however, is bigger than A, okay? And the issue on this, the one that's leading, the one that's leading, okay? The one that's leading. So the leading term, the front, the first term has the A value in it, whether it's X or Y. Okay, and then the B value is the one that's subtracting from that value. So be careful because they could write it in as negative x squared over, you know, 16 plus um, y squared over 49. And really that leading term should be the y squared over 49, the way it's supposed to be. Because, you know, the first one minus the second one, because you have to make sure that that order exists. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions as we go through? Okay, and remember, just because of those subtle differences, that's the thing that makes these harder, okay? Because they're so close. Because if you know just enough to get in trouble, you gotta make sure you spend more time on rereading and compartmentalizing what's an ellipse, what's a parabola, and what's a hyperbola, okay? Now, again, when I have A with X, for lack of a better phrase, my focus, is with x, my vertex is with x, that kind of makes sense, okay? When I have a with y, my focus is with y, my vertex is with y, so that way I keep those things straight. Check out the asymptotes, the way we just talked about them, okay? And I have no idea why I have that L sitting there. Apparently I tried to get rid of something and I hit the keyboard and nothing happened, okay? Are you okay with what the semi-transverse axis is half of the transverse axis and the semi-conjugate axis is just half? And we're gonna talk about the transverse axis and the conjugate axis in a second here because we're gonna use those to help us graph our asymptote facts faster. I don't have to have you use the formula all the time, but I want you to know the formula and how to get it so you can quickly write it down if asked but I don't want you to memorize that this is the asymptote and this is how it is. Just, hey, you just know you solve when the relationship is equal to zero, okay? And you solve for y and you get your asymptote when you get it done. Now, when I was talking about the um, box method of graphing, okay? Uh, sketch line segments uh, at x equal x minus a, okay? So I've got, this is my, transverse axis, okay? This is 2A two way, two way wide. That's the first thing you're gonna do when you make these. You're gonna make a box. And the directions on this is, hey, X is first, so it's gonna be a horizontal, okay? So your, this is your transverse axis, so that extends to, good Lord. We're gonna fix this board so actually I can grab something and it actually does it. So I apologize for it. So when I'm grabbing my transverse axis, maybe, if it lets me, um, that should be the same width as my top and bottom of my rectangle. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yeah. How do I explain this? This is not the length of this side. This is the marking on the axis for the y-axis. So this length is B plus B, so that is 2B up and down for my rectangle. Does that make sense? And that makes from A to A, that's how I get to 2A, because the distance from 1A to 0 is just A, and then from 0 to A, the negative A, that distance is 2A. That's my horizontal distance is 2A. My vertical distance, because this is B on my axis, my y-axis, from negative b to b, it's 2b, okay? So that's a side measurement because that's how long that is. That goes here in my rectangle, and this goes here in my rectangle, okay? Now, the important part of that is that this line, this diagonal of my rectangles is my asymptote, 
okay? So if you have like a piece of paper that you fold over a couple times, once you get your little box in there, just put those diagonals in there, you know, put them dotted, that's your asymptote for your graph, okay? You don't have to graph the actual linear relationship, but you do need to know how to get the actual linear relationship, okay? And then after you graph it, remember A, where it comes in contact with that transverse axis, is your vertex, okay? So your vertex is right on the side of the box you make. And your C should be out here someplace. This should be your C because C is further from your center. C is greater. C squared equals A squared plus B squared, okay, as we go through. And if you don't recall, kind of think about them in your head. When you got the center, you're going to have A here. I should say minus A and A, you know, zero, if it's in standard form. And your C was inside there, okay? That's why from the center, C was less than A, and it was A squared equals B squared plus C squared, okay, for an ellipse. But in a hyperbola, the C is outside, so it's C squared longer, so your longer one is the one that it, the others are equal to, okay? So if you just think about how it's composed, you know, the things that make the structure, it kind of makes sense, okay? Now for our first one that we're going to do, we're just going to check this out. And the finding the vertices and foci of the hyperbola. Okay, so we're going to find vertices and foci. Remember, vertices is plus or minus a, zero or zero plus or minus a. And the foci is plus or minus c, zero or zero plus or minus c, depending on which one's first. Now, in this form, I'm going to divide by 36 all the way across because I've got to have in that fractional form with one on the other side of the equal sign. That's why I'm dividing by 36. So I divide by 36 all the way across, so I get x squared over 9 minus y squared over 4 equal 1, 9. I already know that a is 3, okay? a is with x, it's horizontal with that information that I have. B is 2. Okay, you okay how I found B? Square root of 4. 2 squared is 4. Okay. Are you all right with that? Now, this is the semi-conjugate axis. This is the semi-transverse axis. That's what A is in semi-transverse. B is the semi-conjugate. Now, as I'm stepping through, I'm looking in there. It's fine vertices and foci. So I got vertices plus or minus a, so my vertex, with my center at 0, 0. It's horizontal, 1, 2, 3 back, 1, 2, 3 forward. So I got vertices at negative 3, 0 and 3, 0. Because remember, plus or minus a when it's with x are my vertices, okay? Are you all right with that? Now, my foci, which is c. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Because C is further than A, C is bigger than A, C squared is equal to A squared and B squared put together. Okay, so now I've got 3 squared plus 4 squared, and my C is this plus or minus 13. Okay, square root of 13 is what I'm going to be working with. Are you okay with what I'm doing with that and how I got it? 9 and 4, got 13. So now my foci, which is that plus or minus C, I really should put that C. I guess I should be a little bit more careful. My plus or minus C, 0. So I've got uh, negative square root of 13, 0, and positive square root of 13, 0. Okay, on the graph itself, it's going to be really hard for you guys to see that, but you got to know that square root of 13 is between 3 and 4, right? So you're going to give an estimate where that foci is located. Okay, so I've got an estimate between 3 and 4, it's right here-ish. It looks like I just put it on 4. The graph is not exactly behaving with me, but you know we'll move that over a little bit. But now I want to talk about the box itself. Okay, I got A in there, but remember that is the length of the top and bottom of my rectangle. My B, my conjugate axis, is 4 units, because that's 2 times 2. So on either side, I've got 2 here, i got 2 here, and this is my box I'm graphing in. And the reason this box works so nice is because it's all about slope, 
okay? It's all about the slope of my linear relationship for my asymptote, okay? So now, because of that, I'm going to try to cheat and get some nice lines here as I go through. Maybe if it lets me. Well, I'll just put these both down. I'll move them around. Okay. Let's get rid of that guy. Maybe. Yeah, we'll get, do that. So I've got my graphs. Hopefully, let's just do that here. Move that around as I need. There we go. And we'll do that here. Move it around as we need. We'll do it this way so I don't have it disappearing on me. Okay. So now I've got my slopes. They're going through, through 0, 0. They go through my center, okay? Those are supposed to be my asymptotes, okay? And perhaps as we go through, we'll make them dotted. So you know that those are asymptotes. Now remember, I got my C. It's going to go this way. For my A, that way. Along there, and there's my hyperbola as I graph it. Questions? Now, a couple things, highlights. Transverse axis is 2A. Conjugate axis is 2B. So if my transverse axis is 6, my conjugate axis is 4. Okay? So this length here is 6 going across this way, and it's 4 going up and down to make my rectangle. Okay, and C is outside of A from the center, and that's why it's C squared equal A squared plus B squared in this case. Any other follow-up questions? One last thing, my asymptote, as I'm going through, okay, because it was from here, I've got rise of 2, run of 3, rise of 2, run of 3, X plus or minus, my asymptotes or this value right here, okay? And that's how I pick those up. Rise over run from 0, 0, and we'll talk about what happens when I have H and K other than 0, 0, okay? Now, this next one, I would like you guys to try to do, okay, as we do this. Keep in mind the information provided. I give you, uh, you know, the foci, I gave you C, and it's going to be vertical because C is in the Y position. So give it a try. Okay, you all got a head start on me, so we'll see what's going on. Um, we were looking at finding an equation and graphing a hyperbola. Find the equation of a hyperbola with foci 0, negative 3, and 0, 3. So I already know my foci, uh, my F, I'm going to call them here. And because of that, I know right away A is with Y. Okay? My general form should be Y A squared minus X squared. I don't know why I put the square so low. I apologize for that. B squared equal 1. Okay? My A should be with Y because this can be vertical. Okay? And let's just graph those. Let's make sure. Um, in the past, I've been doing... Let me at least identify what's going on. In the past, I've been doing my foci as uh, green. So let's like make sure that those are green. Okay. So I got 0, negative 3, 1, positive 3, and negative 3. So those are my foci. Right now, I know A is inside that. Okay. And I know my B. My B is 2 right now because of that conjugate axis length. Remember, that's 2B is equal to 4. My conjugate accent length is 4, so B is therefore 2. Okay? So right now, from my 0, I know my B is that big. Okay? So it's going to be going out there on um, 2. Yeah. Let's see if I can get that a wall. I just can't. 2. Boy, that's really off. But. Okay. So we've got that at 2. I'm going to finish my box after I find A. How do I find it? I know my relationship is C squared equal A squared plus B squared. And C currently is 3, so that's squared. A squared plus my B is 2 squared. So that's going to be 4 and 9. So 5 is equal to A squared. So A is therefore the square root of 5. Okay, so my vertices right now, and remember my vertices are with Y. 
I've got 0 negative square root of 5 and 0 square root of 5 for my vertices. So I've got those going. It's a little bit more than 2. So I'm going to pop those in there, a little bit more than 2. So I've got my box finished here. And now I'm going to go ahead and get my diagonals put in. This spot here and this spot here as I go across are my asymptotes. Okay. And keep in mind for me to quickly find my graph of my asymptotes. Remember, it goes through 0, and I just need the slope. So I go rise of the square root of 5, <laughs> okay, run of 2. So my asymptotes are available at plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2, x. Okay, questions about what I did with that? Okay, those are my asymptotes. We should probably put those in. Okay, now my graph itself, I'm going to put in with blue. I've got it going this way, that way. Boy, that was really bad, but you guys are probably a better artist than I am. Okay, as I go through, it shouldn't go away from the graph, from the asymptote. It should be hugging the asymptote as I go through. Okay, and my last thing I got to do is recognize I have y squared. That should have been a squared, by the way. Um, my a was 5 minus x squared. My b is 4 equal 1. Questions about what we're doing? Does it make sense? Now, the only change we're going to experience now is h and k are going to be put in, so no longer are we going to be at 0, 0. Haas, you have a face. I just have two, two examples left, and these go actually faster. Okay. Now, everything that we've done in the uh, previous uh, two days of 8.1 and 8.2 really comes down to H and K, our tra transposing, you know, pushing it around the axis. Everything else stays the same. The only change is now instead of zero for my foci and vertices, I have those relationships. So now it's plus or minus. Instead of plus or minus C and zero, it's H plus or minus C and K. And it's H plus or minus A and K for uh, my foci and vertices when it's, horizontal, when it's a horizontal and when it's a vertical. It's H, K plus or minus C and H, K plus or minus A. The one other subtle change, and it's kind of slight, is my asymptote. Remember taking the square root of both sides when it's 0? If you set up your equation, and we'll do this one first, I've got y minus k over a equal x minus h over b. Kind of short changing that quite quickly. I took the square root of both sides. It's equal to 0 here. Okay. But remember, this is plus or minus on this side. So I've got y minus k is equal to a, and it should be a plus or minus a. This is plus or minus a over b, x minus h on that side. Okay. If you would like to add k to the other side, you can. But it would be acceptable just to leave your asymptotes like that. Okay. Now, for this side, come down here. I've got x minus h, um, and that'll be my plus and minus side. I need some more room. So that's a plus or minus x minus h. a equal my y minus k over b. And I just get my b on the other side. So I've got b over a, x minus h, equal y minus k. This is a plus or minus. So that's very similar to what we have there. Pardon? Opposite the y. Opposite the y. How do I know what to be for my plus or minus? It's just opposite the y, so the y is equal to the plus or minus. But keep in mind the difference in slopes as we're looking at this. Other than that, everything's the same. Okay? And the secret isn't in me manipulating the slopes. I could just go to the center and do rise run, and it'll tell me which slope is which. Okay?
for what's going on with the graph. Now, with that said, maybe. The relationship of the graph itself um, is just one more step with H and K. So let's go for um, checking out what an example would look like for this. Okay. Find the standard form of the equation of the hyperbola whose transverse axis, remember transverse axis is 2A. Transverse axis has endpoints negative 2, negative 1, and 8, negative 1. Okay. I just found out the transverse axis was 10. Okay, negative 2, negative 1, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 1. I just found out that it's 10 apart, that my center is 5 away, so I got A is 5. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my center is 3, negative 1. Okay, now since the transverse axis is horizontal, A is with X, okay? So X squared, and keep in mind, I found this, the center, so I've got X minus three squared over my A, which is 25 now, not 10, be careful about that, minus Y plus one squared. Ah, I don't have B yet, do I? So I gotta do some work, okay? Or do I? The conjugate axis, Length is 8. Remember, the semi-conjugate is B, 2B. So B happens to be 4. Are you okay with how I found it? So my B, 16. And that will equal 1, my general form of the equation. Okay? Any questions about the things I found, where I found them, or anything like that? Now, C, my focus. My focus itself, I've got to go C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. A is 5 squared plus B squared. So this is 41. So the square root of 41 is my C, okay, as we go through. It's with X. So now my concern is my center is 3 plus or minus the square root of 41, negative 1 for my focus. Okay, is it making sense how I'm doing this? Because it's with X, it goes with the H value. If it were with Y, it would go with the K value. So now I'm going from my center, the square root of 41, which is more than six, less than seven for us, okay? So that's five, six, so my focus is on that side. That's five, six, focus is over here as I'm looking it over. Are we doing okay? My box, because I've got my A and B. Got my A, my B was four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Go down here, finish my box. Got my asymptote going through, whoops. Hey, that one does that. My asymptote going through, and my asymptote going through. That's my focus. We'll take my graph this way. And I'm going up here, going out there. Yes, sir. I don't know if it matters a lot, but so the books that I really like, the books that say how 3 plus or minus square root 41. So I was out here at 3, and I subtracted 41, and it's just going to be a little bit more than 6 away from there. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. So that's where I started, but it's a little bit more than six. Okay, so that's where it's going. Yeah. And then the other one's going to be the minus side of 41. Okay. We doing okay? Asymptotes. My last thing. Okay. Asymptote as we go through. Remember what our general form was? Okay. Now I can get it so I can flip around. I've got y plus 1 over 4. 
I got my x minus 3 over 5. This is my plus or minus side because it's away from y. Okay. Because remember, my linears are always y equals. And now I've got y plus 1 equals 4 plus or minus 4 fifths x minus 3. If I really wanted to go crazy about it, I could get one over there and my equation would be, I'd have two of them. One would be a positive 4 fifths slopes, the other would be a negative 4 fifths slopes. But then I just have to multiply it out to actually find out what my y-intercept is. That's why it's kind of a funky y-intercept as I go through. Okay, are there any questions? So let's just double check to make sure we found everything we we're supposed to. Find the standard form, got it. Oh, hyperbola whose transverse axis endpoints there and whose conjugate axis is there. I really just needed to be there, but I wanted to make sure you knew how to get those asymptote as well. Questions? Okay, it's your turn to show me that you get it. Example four. Find the center, vertices, foci, hyperbola, graph it. Make sure you're finding the graph. Make sure you're finding the graph. I should actually do it this way. Isn't that great?
doing okay? Keep in mind, as we do these foci, to make sure that you go in and talk about them as, because they're with x, uh, you got negative 2 minus the square root of 58 in 5, and you got negative 2 plus the square root of 58 in 5. You got your vertices coming in here as uh, negative 2 uh, minus 3 and uh, 5, so that's where I get negative 5 and 5. Okay, and that's where I'm popping up there. And then I've got the negative 2 uh, plus 3 and 5. So that's why I'm at 1, 5 for my vertices for those two. So we're supposed to find center, vertices, and foci. And then get it graphed. Are there any other follow-ups? Now, I did not do the asymptote on this because they didn't ask me to. I did draw them in, and I expect it drawn in each time. Okay. And again, how the asymptote is related, this is going to be y minus 5, 7 here, equal plus or minus x plus 2, 3 there. Put parentheses over, that's an x, that's a y. And I get y minus 5 equals plus or minus 7 thirds, x plus 2, and I can just leave it in this position. Remember, this is point-slope form check it out. It's an actual equation that is acceptable as a linear relationship, point-slope form. Except most of them don't have plus or minus on it. Remember, that's the positive slope and negative slope of what's going on with our asymptotes. Any other follow-ups? Okay. Pay attention to the differences of the, of, from ellipse to hyperbola. Okay, because those are the things that are going to get you. The things that are so close that they're confusing, make sure you just reread your notes and know your vocabulary. Thank you for your time today, folks.